if you don't love yourself or if you don't fill yourself with love, why do you think someone else would do it when you know yourself better than any other person on this earth? And you made a good point where you mentioned compassion as, as well, because the love I have for me and the love that you may have for yourself and Deidre, the love that you have for yourself, it's a different kind of love that we can get from other people. Absolutely. Right? right? But I think sometimes, and I'll let you two at, jump in, I think sometimes the love that we're missing is what is that we look for it outside, but it can't ever fill that void. Is that something that either of you have experienced maybe in your life growing up? She but I'll take this question. I'll take this question. Um, let me also backtrack just a little bit too. Um, one thing that she left out when she said uh, self-love is the self-love is actually the number one in the big boss. First thing that she talks about within the book. So it's the number one rule. Um, to your point and to your question about um, lacking the self-love, absolutely, um, I did. And I would say I did probably until I was in my mid-80s or whatever. And I cared what everyone else said about me, thought about me and things of that nature. And my self-esteem was built off of how other people saw me and their perception of me and whatever. And I was very unhappy and miserable as a result of all of that. And I saw the glass as half empty as a result. <clears throat> So to be specific, you know, growing up without a dad, I um, had identity issues, father issues, and things of that nature, not knowing my story. Um, because I didn't have my dad and know who my dad was, I didn't think that he loved me. Um, my mom was always at work, um, and she worked three jobs uh, to take care of me. She didn't get child support from her, anything like that. And when she was home, um, she didn't spend any time with me. She was tired. So the only place that I really got the, that warm and fuzzy feeling from as far as love was my grandmother. And, you know, I shuffled back and forth between my mom's house and my grandma's house, probably until I was maybe about, I don't know, maybe eight, nine years old. But by the end, my self-esteem was pretty much set at that point. And I was very unhappy as a kid. I was very unhappy as a teenager and things of that nature. And um, I ended up getting into relationships with people who weren't necessarily good for me, per se. I would say I got into relationships with people who, you know, made me feel good about myself or something to that effect. You know, that's fleeting because when a person is uh, angry with you, they're going to instantly tell you that you ain't worth, that you ain't worth a dog. I worth a damn or you don't have a pot to piss in whether to throw it out of or whatever and I would find myself in a lot of toxic relationships especially when I was a, a young man a teenager and things of that nature well when I was about 25 27 I moved away from home and I uh, ended up traveling the world and things of that nature and by traveling the world and being away from other people or being away from uh, my family and my crutches I had to, it gave me an opportunity to look within myself and see my feelings. I couldn't go to my grandmother again anymore to pick me up and things of that nature. I had to look within myself to find those own things or find what I was missing. And um, while out there being by myself, no longer having the crutches of being able to lean on other people, I finally began to lean on myself. And only did I begin to lean on myself, I began to leave on, lean on God too. And, you know, those things that I would often have to hear other people say, like, dude, you're funny or you're handsome or you're smart and stuff like that. I didn't need people to tell me anymore because I started telling myself. And then as I started telling myself, my self-esteem started to significantly improve. And it's gotten to the point now where you can't tell me anything. Um, I'm just that confident in myself. And I started having better outcomes in life and relationships and things of that nature once I started to exude that on my very own self-love. So at the end of the day, I would say that self-love is basically, I mean, like I said, love of yourself, confidence within yourself to where no one can tear you down. Mary J. Blige has a song on um, one of her albums. I think it's Stronger With Each Tear. 
I feel good. So she says, I feel good like the moon is shining just for me. Mm-hmm. Tonight I'm right, fly right. I can be. So I walk around with that song in my head or whatever. And I've had that song in my head ever since that album dropped. And I'm like, you know, can't nobody tell me nothing because the moon shines just for me. I mean, then it doesn't hurt that our, our last name is Moon anyway. So you can't tell me that the moon doesn't shine for uh, for me and for Haley. And because the moon shines for us, that's the essence of our self-love. And I will say, um, Mary J. Blige has so many good songs. And when I was here, when she goes through Heartbreak, I know the next album is going to be fire. It's going to be Baby, great, I'm right? <laughs> 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 right oh, anytime i hear news about mary j blige and she's going through something i'm like i can't wait until she releases an album because it's going to be great <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> i know you came from the point you mentioned um bullying mm-hmm. right and since you since your book is um you know you talk about self-love and and things like and things of that nature did you find it difficult to go through the the bullying and still have that level of self-love which was healthy for you um it definitely was difficult because i didn't have self-love whatsoever it doesn't matter if it was just a few years ago when i wasn't really even thinking about this stuff i didn't have it whatsoever because i was always second guessing myself i was always feeling like it was my fault every single thing that was my fault it wouldn't even relate to me and i would be like nope it's my fault I did this, I did that, so it influenced this, and then it influenced that. And then I always managed to lead things back to me. So, no, I didn't have self-love whatsoever, so it was definitely difficult. And then as I got older and still bullied by so-called friends, um, like, it was a lot harder because I fake loved myself. Like, I would, like, I thought, well, maybe if I fake it, then eventually it'll come to me. It did eventually, but at that time, I was only just a little bit of confidence. So it could easily be knocked down and I could easily go back to where I was in the first place. So yeah, it definitely was difficult. It was hard to balance out all the negative words and then um, put positive into my mind because subconsciously my mind is taking all the negativity in and then my conscious mind is taking all the positivity in and then that clashed with each other. So since that like clashed with each other, I had to learn how to like block out that negativity and like just cut it off completely, no matter how hard it was. So that is what I had to do. And now since I'm at the point where I'm just like any mistake that I make, I just apologize for and I just move on. I don't bash myself. I don't take a second thought. I see what I did wrong. I apologize for it. I fix it. Done. What's done is done. You can't tell me anything else about it once I'm already done with it. So um, I closed any door that I needed to, and then ev- ever since then, I started to love myself more and more. The more I was by myself, I loved myself more and more. The more I did things my way, I loved myself more and more. The more I thought more about me instead of what this person thought, what this person thought, what they said, what they said, what they might think, what they might think, the less that I thought about that and the more I just started to value my opinion and I look at it from their perspective and put myself in their shoes, the more that I love myself unconditionally. Because usually the people who tear you down are the same exact people who tear themselves down inside. So realizing that and realizing that same thing, that helps me realize and that has definitely helped with my strength so now as soon as you say something rude to me like I can easily just brush it off and just come back at you if I have to so if somebody would try to start an argument with me I wouldn't like break down and just like go full-on anxious and like arguing and just arguing it'll just be awful um now I can just like argue and say one simple thing and it will leave somebody speechless which is one of my biggest flexes by the way so yeah, it definitely was hard, but I got there eventually. Yeah.